We're going to watch Donnie Sweet Potatoes uh, with a strikingly non-symbolic title as opposed to other films that might have been made on the Donnie. This is the core of the curriculum project that was doing a uh, national curriculum on uh, social sciences and starting with anthropology and starting with uh, starting with uh, Netzelic Eskimo for the first year. Second year was going to be on horticulture. So they wanted a uh, they wanted a footage on horticulture, which is uh, the first stage, so to speak, of growing crops and where you don't use plows, you don't use draft animals, you just have digging sticks, basically. And th th that's what the Donnie had. So the Donnie were perfect for that. So I shot this, by then I had done uh, a lot of observations on sweet potatoes and I'd done, uh, and I knew all the steps. So I uh, shot the footage for that, uh, brought it home, back to Cambridge in uh, 63 and uh, turned it into first a one hour film and then uh, working it through, showing it to people and talking the narration and it went from one hour down to 19 minutes. So what we'll see is a 19 minute film that starts with uh, the beginning and goes through the eating of sweet potatoes. Uh, so why don't we start? when I went for the second time, uh, leaving about, I guess, March of 63 and staying until early December of 63. And I used 16 millimeter Bolex uh, movie camera. All the different members of the expedition, each writing or filming or fo photographing, uh, we really very quickly uh, had a tremendous literature on this one group of Donnie. And this was, uh, this man was my closest friend, best informant. He was not a great warrior, but a really smart man. And uh, he had told us when Gardner first surveyed the area, he and Brookhouse, the Dutch patrol officer who helped us very much in getting started. They went out uh, in about March, uh, maybe February, uh, to look for a place where the expedition could stay and uh, came into the Tukum neighborhood. And it was this man who walked up and said, you can stay here. I mean, he quickly saw that it was greatly to his advantage to have these people, whoever they were, whatever they were doing, uh, staying. But he told us his name was Wally. Well, in fact, his name was Umwe. But he didn't know what kind of trouble he might get into. So he gave us, in effect, a pseudonym. So if the Dutch police would come looking for Wally, he had deniability. From his lookout, he could see the Witaya opening new gardens on their side of the former no man's land. In fact, peace was secure and there was no more war in this sector. A vast area of the Dutch and then the Indonesians had pacified, stopped the warfare. So there were large amounts of no man's, old no man's land that could now be opened up again. And that's what these people are doing. And here Wally is, Omwe is, uh, using a stone adze. 
to chop some of the um, trees. This was a, a totally opposed shot. The, I mean, they were going to clear this anyway, but I asked them at one point to do that. And forever afterwards, that was known as uh, Kararo's field. They called me Carl became in Donnie Kararo. And that's about the only posed shot I've got. Okay, I want to show how the digging sticks were used to uh, break up the soil and, and uh, very effective for what they were. The women would come out and they were uh, burning things. In 63, the Dutch had brought in these little white pigs and the Donny thought that was great. And for a while they raised them, but they, I gather that they were susceptible to some kinds of diseases. I don't think there are any of those white pigs left. But I was very much interested in showing uh, the change was taking place. <laughs> 